I met these two people uh, on Reddit, uh, funny enough, and um, we actually implemented um, their paywall on our website just as like a, a beta test and it worked out pretty well. But uh, uh, why don't you guys just introduce yourselves and um, kind of, uh, yeah, you guys can take it away from here. Cool, yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, so we are super pumped to be here. Hello, everybody in LA. As you can tell, well, we're not from LA, we're from the UK. Um, but yeah, so we are Satoshis and we are a lightning startup that is a funding model for the web. And what we do is we combine ads and micro payments. Um, but just, I guess, before we get into that, we'll just give you a quick, like, who we are. Um, you can start, if you like. Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm Chris. Um, I studied computer science and uh, I got into Bitcoin because I worked for a blockchain company. And uh, I just found out a bit more about Bitcoin and Lightning and just got really into it. So, and I've been kind of playing around with Lightning ever since. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I'm Ruby. Um, so I studied journalism and drama at university. And then right after, went traveling around Canada for a few years and started a blog whilst I was there. Um, Bitcoin is kind of brand new to me just kind of since the start of the year, since we started our idea and Bitcoin was the best thing for it. Um, so yeah, so I guess we met in Montreal at the start of this year and kind of put our heads together over problems that we identified on the internet. Um, and yes, yeah, Satoshis was born. So I'm gonna actually turn off my camera and share my screen so you can see our presentation. So basically we're a funding model for the web and we are kind of like a unique twist on a paywall um, so just before I get into it, we'll just kind of give you a bit of background on why we do what we do. Um, so yeah, so kind of the broken web was one of the things that we were mulling over together. Um, so kind of the content on the web has that we access has been funded by advertising almost since the start of the internet, uh, which was great because it meant that users could access content for free whilst the creator behind it still made money. Um, but since the increase in ad blockers, um, and don't get me wrong, like, <laughs> we don't hate ad blocker. I honestly think ad blocker was absolutely necessary for toning down ads. You know, they were horrible, like, videos and pop-ups everywhere. Um, so ad, block ad blocker definitely has improved advertising as a result. Um, however, the increase in ad blockers has meant a huge loss in revenue for publishers. Um, almost up to 50%, depending on the genre, especially wow. with technical users being the highest amount of people using them. Um, and even larger publications like newspapers and magazines have struggled to cope with the loss in revenue. Uh, and now I'm sure you know, like a lot of big newspapers have disappeared behind subscription only paywalls. Um, like I'm sure you've all experienced it at some point when you've tried to access something online, like I've got here, the Wall Street Journal. Uh, and all you want to do is one read one article, but unless you subscribe for a whole month, you can't go any further. Um, and obviously, it's completely unfeasible to be subscribed to every single newspaper that we want. Um, but we believe that it is important to be able to access lots of different sources of information. Um, so if we can't effectively monetize through ads or don't want to be bombarded with subscriptions everywhere, we thought, okay, well, we need a better solution. Um, yeah, so that leads us on to our solution. Um, so what you can see here on the left is what a Satoshi's paywall looks like. Um, so yeah, we offer free access through ads, or if you want, instead, you can choose to pay in micropayments. Um, and the beauty behind it is whatever they choose, the creator behind it still makes money. Um, and what is so unique about Satoshis is that we call it a minimal friction paywall because we still include that free access to reach the content. Um, so I'll speak a bit more about the ad side of it later, but for now I'll just kind of talk you through the micropayments. Um, so a lot of people ask us why we use Lightning. I mean, I'm sure you guys know why, but most people, they think, why would you use Lightning when it's so complicated and you could use traditional payment methods like credit cards and PayPal for micropayments? Um, but the problem with these are the high transaction fees. Um, so like you can't make a one cent transaction fee using normal like PayPal or something like that. Um, 
A solution to this would be to aggregate a user's spend and bill them at the end of the month or whenever they've reached a certain threshold to make it feasible. Um, the problem with this, as we see it, is that to do that, you would need to track the user's browsing history. So obviously that would be terrible for privacy and it also defeats our entire ethos. <laughs> Um, so yes, yeah, so the Lightning Network lets us do micropayments without tracking uh, because of its tiny transaction fees. It also offers more privacy because a user with their own Lightning node could pay a content creator who has their own Lightning node and they could do this privately. So we don't actually have to sit in the middle making it the most decentralized solution. Um, yeah, so I guess you could say, well, if micropayments are so great, why aren't we already using them everywhere? Um, that leads us on to decision fatigue. So one of the primary disadvantages to micropayments is yeah, decision fatigue. So making purchasing decisions always has a cognitive cost attached and constantly deciding to make one cent transactions or something around that would be just simply annoying and bad UX. Um, so to counter this, we've created the Satoshi Streamline extension, which is what we've screenshotted here. Um, so that can auto pay sites to remove the decision making element and make micropayments a smoother experience than even viewing ads. Um, so obviously we wanted to make sure that users still have control over their spending. So the way that the extension works is that users can go to a site and can add the site to their allow list and then you could set a max spend per day and you could customize it to how you like um, so we also hope that this will improve the quality of content on the web perhaps so we can move away from clickbait because a user would only add a site with good content to their allow list and we would assume that to get visitors back you would want to be on people's allow list um, yeah so so that's kind of the micro payment side of things and how we overcome decision fatigue. Um, and now I'll explain why we choose to actually continue using ads as part of our approach. Um, so the ads are there to continue to provide a free option for users. Um, so people who cannot or just don't want to pay for stuff yet. Um, we also like to think of it as like a stepping stone. So many users if they were to meet a Lightning Network paywall for the first time, they might just immediately click away because obviously they have no idea what it is. Um, I've also obviously seen people trying to scan it with a, a regular barcode scanner. Um, so the ads would mean that they can still gain immediate access and then they could have more opportunity to come around to the idea and get on board with coming on board with a Lightning paywall um, if they were to meet it again in the future. Um, and what's also different about our ads is that they all include captures, uh, so that this helps to deter bots as well and reduce ad fraud. Um, yeah, so the Satoshi's roadmap. So where we're up to right now, basically we are currently all still custodial, um, but we do plan to open source both the paywall and the browser extension. Uh, right now it is just the browser extension, but we are going to turn it into an app. Um, and then we plan on letting content creators and users connect their own Lightning nodes on both the paywall and the extension, uh, just to provide as decentralized a solution as possible. Um, so that is kind of the roadmap, the long game. But right now, our main focus is on just signing up as many content creators as we can, so like newspapers, blogs, podcasts, whatever a creator would like to start making money from, that is what they can use the paywall for. Um, so yeah, so actually what we're going to do is just a really quick live demo um, of how to create a Satoshi's paywall, just so you can kind of have an idea of how it works and how easy it is. Um, so can you all see that? Yep. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So this is just like really simple HTML um, that I've we've just made so that you can kind of see how it works. So I've left here what, you, I've split it up so that you can have a content preview. And then this is what I'm gonna put behind the paywall. Um, obviously it depends on what you are paywalling it, whether or not you would have a preview, but for a lot of things like 
blog posts and stuff like that, having a preview is great for getting users on board. Um, so yeah, so right now, if I was to look at it, this is what it would look like. Um, and now I'm going to show you how to paywall it. So this is the Satoshi's paywall. This is on the Satoshi's website, just at the top. Um, you can actually only see this if you've signed up and logged in, which I already have. So if you would come on, you can hit paywall, and this is where you would create. So the number of ads that you would want you would want a user to view, totally up to the publisher's discretion. Obviously, the more ads that you include, the more money you can make, but you can decide how much friction you want to create with somebody visiting your page. Um, so like, I don't know, I'm going to put two for today because that's not too many. Um, the cost in Satoshi's, again, it's totally up to you how much you want to charge, like less money, less friction, but you can value it whatever you like. So I don't know, let's say we're going to charge 500. And then what would you do here is you would paste into this box whatever you want hidden behind the paywall. So this bit, I'm going to leave my content preview alone, and then I'm just going to cut this including actually all the pink ads and everything. And let's copy and paste it back in. Boom, I'm gonna save it. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so this is actually super view zoomed in, which is why it looks a bit strange. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically how easy it is to create a paywall. And that's how you would do it. So then the user could choose to view ads to continue, or they could choose to pay to go through. Um, obviously, this looks very like bare. That's because we don't add any styling effects to the paywall. That just means that whoever's behind it can either customize it to whatever they want it to look like, or it actually just picks up the default stylings of your site. So it'll just pick up whatever CSS you've included. Um, so I'm not actually going to pay to go through it right now, but this is what it would look like. So there's your um, QR code, um, which obviously for you guys, like you know how to scan that. But we're hoping that this can be something that a lot of non-crypto users can come on board with. Um, so as you can see here, we have a little link to the Satoshi Streamline. So that actually acts like as a user wallet and also obviously auto pays sites as you go. Um, so even if you guys wanted to do it, Oh, it's gone. Um, I paid it. I paid it. Did somebody pay it. Hooray, <laughs> we're in. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, essentially how it works. It's pretty simple. Um, so I'm just going to head back into here. Um, can you see that? Yep. All right, perfect. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Just to kind of conclude with you. Um, so like, I mean, fairly and appropriately monetizing online content has been something that's been a challenge for a long time. Other people have been trying to solve it too. Um, we think that the Lightning Network is the most efficient and decentralized solution. Um, so yeah, and it could solve this problem of monetizing online content whilst encouraging more mainstream and widespread use of Bitcoin. Um, and after all, like Bitcoin was supposed to be about peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash and more than just, you know, sitting and hodling. Um, so, yeah, we're hoping that these things can come together and really complement each other. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty much it from us. We just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, this is our contact info. If anybody wanted to get in touch, like we'll do a QA and a in a sec, but if anybody wanted to get in touch, because they were thinking of like adding a paywall to anything or they wanted to just give us some private feedback, we would be over the moon with that. Um, we also do have some like additional perks for beta testers. So if anybody did want to come on board with the paywall right now, you would get those perks. Again, we can chat with you about that privately. Um, and yeah, our Twitter is pretty new. We do need to start posting on it more, but if you would like to follow us on Twitter, that is us. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go back on so you can see us, so it can be a little Q&A. Cool. Hello, are we back? Yeah. Oh, that was pretty interesting. So um, I'm curious, you mentioned that at, at some point in your roadmap, you want other people to host basically Satoshius for their own websites, right? Um, so, yes. uh-huh. 
so so right now it's kind of like custodial so if you go through the paywall you're hitting our lightning nodes but the kind of end goal would be if you kind of run your own nodes and users run their own node and they pay for content and we don't really sit in the middle mm -hmm. obviously if you're new and you don't know anything about bitcoin we're happy to help you yeah um so i guess with that being said like what would be kind of your business model then um if you hope that other people run your software and it's open source yeah so I guess we have the dual option of ads and uh, micro payments. So even if people run their own nodes, you know, they still like to have the ad option. So that's kind of our business model on that side. Mm -hmm. And we think to get people to that, you know, goal where they're running their own node is kind of still a bit far out. So I think in the meantime, we're, we're still kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, happy to, to help and take a small cut. Yeah, there'll always be some, some people that will choose the more simple service. So we can be there for those people, but we actually encourage people to to do it themselves yeah. so so kind of like our you know like we feel like custodial it's easy but you should do it yourself but if you don't want to do that it's, it's fine to have the option cool yeah it's interesting because i've seen um some paywall lightning paywall sites where it's just lightning invoices or other mm -hmm. way uh, other paywall sites where you have to log in and it's paid subscription um, but neither, I haven't seen one where you get to choose between the two. And I thought that was kind of an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we hope that's kind of like a stepping stone for people, really. Um, so maybe after you've seen enough ads, you're like, you know what, I'll just speed it up. I'll, I'll get mm -hmm. um, a, a quick lightning wallet and it'll auto pay everything. And you can imagine browsing around the web and it's just auto paying. And you, you don't have to see ads. You don't have to mm -hmm. see paywalls. And maybe at the end of the year, you've only spent a few dollars, you know. So you're like, why not? Yeah. And yeah, we are kind of actively trying to move away from being another you know, subscription service. And there's a lot of people that already do that model. So yep. this is something a bit different because there are, there's so many subscriptions now. And at what point does it get too much? Yeah. So if what, could you maybe go just ahead. talk a little bit about how your Satoshi Streamline plugin works? Because that I think is a really interesting component of this project that it would allow people to sort of selectively pick domains, I assume, to kind of auto pay in some way. Mm -hmm. Can you talk yep. a little bit about how that works? Yeah, so um, it's not super complicated. It just, as a user, when you're presented with a paywall, you can have like a view ad or you can have pay, but if you have the Streamline plugin, you can choose to kind of add it to your auto pay list. So then we, we put a domain in your list and you've got, you can set like, um, a max so you can say i'm happy to auto pay up to like a thousand or two thousand sats a day so when you go on that specific domain with a with a paywall it will kind of auto pay so you don't need to see or decide anything mm -hmm. and then is, are this are the is there like a little wallet in that plugin or is that still going through your hosted site at the moment yeah so right now it's kind of like all going for our node but the idea is that it would kind of like plug into your own lightning node or like um but obviously that's a bit further down the line. Uh, yeah, also yeah. Very cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really a, a neat, a neat, a neat model. Yeah. Um, I guess there's a question about Brave. I can see. So, um, I guess we, we get that a lot. People ask us, you know, how are you different from Brave or Coil? Um, well, I guess we haven't built a whole kind of browser and a whole kind of like ICO thing. We're just it's pretty simple in a sense. Uh, we just use Bitcoin and Lightning, and it works now. So if you want to, you know, like use it now, go for it. Um, Brave does this thing where I think it's kind of like showing you ads if you're browsing around, and it apparently um, kind of like collects your user data and, and shows you ads in an anonymous way. So I guess you kind of need to make sure they're doing that properly. And they do this thing where they're kind of sharing out the, the tokens with uh, advertisers and publishers. So it's all a bit. Um, I guess it's kind of complicated um, and here I think for us you can set your own like price as a publisher so with Brave they're like oh if you read we'll pay you per minute that the user's reading mm -hmm. so for here you know as a publisher you can choose how much you want to pay all stuff um, yeah I have like a technical question like yeah, perfect. When, how does it actually work? Because I uh, looked at the page and it looks like the contents is, is encrypted. So what actually has to happen for someone yeah, to encrypt it into their system? Yep. Um, we'll add something else to that. So, so we don't host the content. Uh, so basically, um, what happens when you create a paywall is you, you paste the content in, 
and we it just generates a unique key which it encrypts the content with and then it encrypts the key with our public key right. so all that happens is uh, we send that encrypted key over to us and if you pay or view an ad we send back that key decrypted so you can unlock the content so we're never hosting anything right. uh, you just get a small kind of like message going through okay so i would give you my content and then you give me back the encrypted content and I serve you encrypted content. Yeah, and, and, and that, pro that process can happen kind of like all offline on your end. So, you know, all it's doing is, is doing encryption. But, um, yeah, so I guess we, we might make an API for that. Or if, you know, if you've got content that you don't, you're scared we'll see, you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, that'd be interesting. Like a, like a WordPress plugin or something where yep. the plugin would send that stuff to you to get encrypted and then serve that. Mm -hmm. okay. Things like um, WordPress plugins and ways to make it work with specific sites is something that we're working on. It's just a little bit down the road yet. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I think that's one of the biggest things uh, for our website. We do like GitHub pull requests, and and, and uh, we have to like the uh, we have to write the HTML ourselves. Um, it would if you could just if there was like a WordPress plugin or a Squarespace plugin. Um, yeah. For us to just, for people who aren't technical to just write their blog and be like, I'm going to write this, plug this in, boom, and now it's a paywall. You know, I think that would be super killer. I started looking at a WordPress plugin and I haven't done PHP in a while, so <laughs> I kind of didn't get around to it. But yeah, no, it's definitely on our roadmap. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. As is, just to kind of ask you guys a question uh, from like a user end. Um, so obviously, like we have the Satoshi Streamline auto pay feature. Would you as a user prefer to have a browser extension or an app to do that? Can you define what you mean by app? Like when you say app, I think of like phone app, a smartphone app. Yeah. For, like a, yeah, like just, app. just like that, really. I would prefer a browser extension because I would probably be browsing on well, well actually i guess it depends if, if i'm on my mm. uh linux pc i would want a, brow a browser extension and if i'm on my phone i guess i'd want an app okay yeah i guess because you used to be able to extend to install extensions on your like if you had firefox on your phone but i think it's kind of a bit more locked down now so it's a bit annoying but yeah i think maybe yeah an app what, what you guys yeah. should um do is look at uh Basic, basically trends on um, where blogs, where people are reading the blogs. Is it on their phones or on their computers or web mm -hmm. browsers? And then that'll yeah. kind of give you a clue as to like which side you can prioritize first. Yeah. Well, I think that's why we've kind of gone the extension route because right now our main kind of users are like crypto blogs and like tech blogs like that's so our that's what we're working, like aiming to work with at this stage. And then further down the line, yes, we'll be reaching out into other genres. And we kind of feel like once you move into those areas, it will be more like, um, you know, like people who probably would prefer apps rather than browser extensions. And yeah. Uh, what I think I, there might be some more security also in an app. Like, because I assume if you do a plugin, it's going to be like a JavaScript thing. Well, yeah. Like, if you do an app, you can maybe do a little, a little nicer kind of full wallet limitation. Does that make sense too? If yeah. For, host um, wallet. Yeah, for the extension, we kind of need to do a few things which are not amazing for the UX, just because you know you can imagine a site trying to spam like loads of payments for like an incorrect domain or something. So we need to make sure the users like yes, this is the right domain, and they need to check the confirm box and look at the site they're on. So I think maybe an app would be. Uh, better UX, but the browser extension was kind of simple to start with. Would the app then, I guess, interface to the browser in the same way? In other words, that do we, I don't know, pop something yeah. up or auto? We still have the would it still be able to have the auto pay feature? I guess is what I was asking. Yeah, um, I guess maybe because I was thinking you're browsing with your sort of browser app and it kind of calls off like this intent, but I guess the problem is. If you're on a, on a certain domain, we need to make sure that you're calling for the right domain. Like, you know, what, what happens if you're trying to auto pay and you're just trying to you know, do like a thousand of them? Mm -hmm. and 
So we need to think about that. If I pay I for, I'll oh, go for it. Keep going. No, I was gonna say, I, do, I use some apps that are like password managers that are actually yeah. separate apps, either desktop or mobile. Um, okay. But then they tie into the browser, I think through a plugin. So it's like a plugin in the browser that talks to the app. So it's a small uh, plugin. Yeah. And maybe something like that would be a, a good approach too. Okay. Because it's a similar problem that password manager versus what you're doing in terms of. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, interesting. Cool. If I pay to, what, uh, to look at an article, uh, how long does that last in perpetuity? Like if I come back the next day, is it still available? Do I have to pay again? Yeah. So, so right now, like your key gets stored in a cookie for forever, I guess, until you, you clear your cookies. But um, a lot of people ask us, you know, can I make it time limited or some, like a feature like that? Maybe. Um, right now, we've kind of, kind of kept it simple. If you've unlocked an article, then you have, you have it forever unless mm -hmm. you delete your cookies. Um, <laughs> so, uh, depends. Yeah. you know, some people, I guess, delete their cookies every time they close their browser. <laughs> But we we could probably do like a way for you to kind of save those yeah. if you wanted. And like, if I were to watch an ad, is there a way for me as someone who's paying for the ad? Like, I paid for you to show my advertisement. Is there a way for mm -hmm. me to keep track of like conversions? Like, clicked on, they clicked to view the ad. They clicked on the ad to come to my website. Yeah. So so when we show you the ad, we also kind of like track if somebody clicked on it, right? So, so we'll know somebody clicked on it. Um, that's like a sort of JSON call that gets sent if they click on it. Um, yep, so, so you, you will be able to know on the ad side if somebody viewed it and somebody kind of clicked on it and you, it was a conversion, unless they've got JavaScript or something. Got it, got it, very cool. Mm -hmm. And we have um, captures for all the ads. And I think the plan is to let the advertiser choose their capture as well. Got it. Is the idea that you would sort of plug into those larger ad networks to get your ad content that you're serving? Yeah. Or so you would run the ad network? So for now, we're not really sure, but we think probably partnering up with an ad exchange would be useful. Mm -hmm. I guess because our ads are a bit, have captures. So, you know, you have like an ad of a shoe and there has to be like a specific question about that ad. To make sure that the bot's not okay. running great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, who are kind of like your early users, uh, and have you guys? How's like traction been looking like for you guys? Uh, so right now it's mainly just kind of people interested in Bitcoin. Yeah. Like, um, listed like you know once or twice on on Reddit yeah. and Hacker News. So really just people in Bitcoin and crypto really. Um, yeah. So we have a few users, but. We're trying to kind of get more and that's our primary focus yeah and in terms of like when people are going through the paywalls i think maybe our uh, data is a bit skewed because it looks like most people pay rather than view ads but i think that's because the people looking at these at the moment are all into bitcoin so they're like oh yeah qr code whereas obviously if there was non-crypto users i guess those people viewing ads would go way up so yeah they wouldn't even know how to use lightning so yeah, yeah. yeah and a related term and a related uh, uh, subject. Like, what kind of trends have you seen, or do you think something will change, or are normal people using Lightning, or you know what what needs to happen yeah. there? I, I think it's too early because we, yeah. we put it on just on like uh, you know like the Lightning subreddit on, on Reddit and uh, Bitcoin, and like I would say like probably like about half of people are actually choosing to pay and then quite a few are actually going through which is to us is kind of surprising and good like in a good way but that's so, because most people are already into yeah. crypto so but that's why we have like the browser extension i mean also you know even for like people who are already into bitcoin and have their own wallets we would hope that once there's you know quite a few websites with satoshi's paywalls it would make sense for you to also use the extension just for that like seamless experience but for non-crypto users, it's the auto pay, auto pay feature and it also doubles as a wallet. Um, and we're hoping that we can get some kind of integration so you can convert like straight from fiat into like into like into Satoshis. So we're hoping that that will just make it so much easier for 
known crypto users to come on board because yeah. if they just want to cut out all the bitcoin bit well they basically can just by getting the extension cool Did anybody else mm -hmm. have any other questions? Um, how, how, yeah. Sorry, how much can, uh, granularity and like control are um, is anybody going to have over the ads that are served? Because the ads that are served for um, uh, for the BitDevs one uh, that we have up on our wall is super minimal. Like it's, I yep. expect it to be much more annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it was super simple. Um, um, I was when you say ads, I'm like I'm thinking, oh, I got to sit through a 30 second video ad or right. something like. Yeah, I, th I think because our ads have like captures, so maybe I see that as like a positive for an advertiser because you can't really ad block them, or and you, you kind of like I guess you can trust that they're less likely to be bots. Uh, and yeah, like a lot of people ask us, can I plug in my own ads? And I think that's sort of like a feature, mm -hmm. which would, you know, like be a good selling point for us is that. As a publisher, you can like be like, oh, actually, do you know what? I want to show these ads, and I don't want my my users to see just random kind of ads about malware or weird stuff. Yeah. So it's definitely like something we want to work on. And obviously, like, yeah, we're not showing like garish video ads or anything like that. But it's completely up to whoever makes the paywall. They could, like, you know, if they wanted to charge like ten thousand sats to get in, maybe they'll make you see twenty ads rather than one, which would be just as annoying as well yeah. yeah it's very cool it's a really really interesting project i think uh, mm -hmm. it would definitely be an improvement to the internet and to uh, a great use case for lightning that's really yeah really also just like really trying to give people more choice as to how they do it because everybody's very split over whether or not we should even be paying or whether or not we should have to view ads. So that's the whole thing. Um, yeah. If anybody has a blog or anything that they want to monetize, or if they just know somebody who does and you think, here's a way to make money. Because um, we're hoping it will be, well, it will be a higher payout than just displaying ads. Um, and one of the hopes is that, like, you know, if people are just paying for your content directly, well, your blog or whatever it is doesn't have to be focused around like selling an affiliate or whatever it is. It can just be about the content because they've paid for it already. Um, and you, so, said, yeah. Actually, yeah. you said that you are going to be working on APIs because I'm thinking even if you don't have specific plugins to, you know, platforms, you know, just maybe having some API that somebody could, yeah. could call, you know, make their own plugins basically for it. Yeah, uh, that's definitely uh, something we want to do, kind of like, just to kind of like open it up to everyone mm -hmm. else and see where it goes. Yeah, that'd be a nice, nice first step. That's cool. Yeah, very cool project. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. That was uh, really interesting to hear about uh, lightning paywalls and like your vision and um, the yeah the industry that you guys are trying to disrupt. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, yeah, no, it's been great. Um, hopefully we will see all your faces again. Uh, I think we're going to let you go because it's like four o'clock in the morning. In the yeah. End. So we'll let you continue without us. <laughs> <laughs>